interesting about it, it really encapsulates where the computer industry became and how to run a computer system nowadays. EdSec was put together by a guy called Morris Wilkes in about 1952-53. After the war, he'd been in radar during the war. After the war, he went back to Cambridge University. He was tied in with the mathematics department and then decided, look, I want to build a computer. At about that time, the Americans were talking about NSAC, which they actually used to actually calculate the movement of bullets or rockets from, um, from ships. So ballistics you need, apparently when you, do, when, you, when you fire ballistics from ships, you need a great big table to tell you where they're going to end up, with the angle and the what have you, and a whole lot. So the Americans put together a computer that did that. There was a bit of a dis dispute within them, and then the, the guys who worked on it said, I'm going to just tell everyone about this, and so they did a public course. Morris Wilkes went across there, and on his way back, he started penning the EDSAC computer. It runs as a stunning 650 instructions per second, so not fast for its time, but he didn't want to be ultimate fast machine. He wanted to explore the technology and understand it. It is actually what we call a Turing complete machine. So, sorry, it doesn't have a tape reader there, but there'll be a tape reader for an input there. It is a central processing unit. It has a store, which is made of mercury, we're taking mercury out of this one. These were actually called the coffins. Really great tool. Uh, that was used as a store for your program or your data. And then there would have been an output. They also used these uh, CRT tubes for outputs as well. So, um, but there would generally be a teleprinter for that. The memory's interesting. Morris Wilkes, uh, as I said, worked on radar. Somehow you need to be able to store information for a period of time. So what he did, he got mercury. He excited it with a sound pulse, so the sound went across the tube across here. The electronics runs much quicker, so the electronics went off and did some calculations and then caught up with the sound pulse at the other end and completed its calculation. I'm a little bit, I'm making it a little bit easier for naivety because you've got to go and be fresher and all sorts of things like that. But you actually basically have 16 pulses of sound running across here, which would then drive the information. So you're going to have an incredible synchronicity between your computer and the memory. Which is why there is that little red, or this black dial across there. So you would sit there and actually tune your memory, because you can imagine if you got the wrong bit of memory, it would sit there and crash. <laughs> Not great. Right. So, Simon, how much memory, or how many characters, or bits? Uh, it would be those about chips? eight, it could go up to 22, but they had problems with the last three, so they ran as a practical of 18 bytes across. Bytes? Bytes, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, there's 18 bytes by 36 wide. Sorry. So it's what, by 18 deep, sorry. Okay. Um, 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 um. The interesting thing was this, it generated a lot of interest in the university. So undergraduates would come in and work on this, try and keep it going on the line. They actually ran their first computer course based on this one. And I found out from a colleague of mine yesterday, this little booklet here was part of the first book written on computer programming. One of the volunteers who's working on building this one has actually got the original book and he's ever so proud of it. So. But wonderful bits of history to get in. Um, when you buy a computer, you go, well, what's my rate of return on this? Why do I return on what would I get from it? Now, it's easy because it's the first one. We can actually trace through. It actually made a contribution and was cited in three Nobel Prize contributions. Uh, one on prime numbers, one on uh, um, crystal, um, diffra crystal something or other, diffraction. Uh, uh, diffraction type of stuff, which I'm not sure of, and one on uh, molecular growth of... Um, organisms or something like that. So again, you could see it immediately making a contribution. The committee was actually set up to actually share out time and use this computer. So we start to see a computer department actually arrive. All the things, DevOps, I think, hadn't arrived yet. I've got some DevOps guys here. But you know, it, there's some interesting logs which Cambridge made available of students of an evening going back, pulling valves out, putting valves back in again, and the whole lot. The valve extraction. Oh yeah, there's a valve extraction tool there as well, because the valves are jolly hot. So mm -hmm. pull them out, of course. Uh, this machine is a replica, as you can see they're working through it. They've actually got each of the individual stages working, each of the sets of racks working, and they're now connecting between the racks. <laughs> there is actually, I think somewhere in there, there's a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually carry around a Raspberry Zero with me. They mm -hmm. use a Raspberry Pi to actually, because it's a serial machine, they need to have a clock that actually sets it up, and they use a little Pi to actually set up the whole thing. I think it's just wonderful. Um, the first PhD was actually awarded in computer sciences for something called a subroutine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
you know, what you do is you have your program counter going down there and like that. You decide to go off to a bit of code you're going to use quite often, run that bit of code, and then return to where you are. Now, if I go back to my coding practices, I can imagine when they're writing that it was jolly difficult because I could never get back to the right point in the code. So I'd imagine this would crash quite often instead of creating the subroutines. But a brilliant contribution uh, and a brilliant bit of history in terms of our first computer.